Owning your own plant nursery is extremely rewarding and may be a dream for many plant lovers. One of the biggest challenges nurserymen face is supplying all the plants with the best growing conditions possible. However, many growers produce a huge variety of plants of different species, each with their own soil, light, irrigation and nutrient requirements. It would be a cost and management nightmare to supply the exact growing conditions for each species. The most cost effective solution to this problem is to assemble plants with similar requirements together and manage them as a group. In spite of this, some plants may still experience nutrient, water and light stress, and physical symptoms may develop. In this video, we are going to discuss the yellowing of leaves in your nursery plants with particular focus on nutrient deficiencies. We will look at the causes of yellowing, why it is detrimental, and how you can prevent or treat the disorder. If you would like to keep the information discussed in this video on hand, then check out our ebook in the description. Let's get started. There are numerous factors that can cause leaves to yellow. Overwatering, underwatering, sunlight exposure, and nutrient availability are some of the main determinants of leaf color. As we mentioned before, in this video we're going to focus on the role that nutrients play in turning leaves yellow. Let's start off with a bit of plant physiology to get a better understanding of why leaves turn yellow. Chlorophyll is a pigment found within the leaves of plants. These pigments reflect green light, giving them their characteristic hue. Chlorophyll is a chelate compound. A chelate is a compound that has essential metal iron, in the case of chlorophyll, the central metal iron is magnesium. There are also many other compounds that play a role in chlorophyll production. One such element is iron, which allows enzymes to produce compounds that will eventually be transformed into chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a vital compound in plants as it is the site for photosynthesis, which allows plants to convert light energy into food energy in the form of carbohydrates. Therefore, if any of the elements integral to chlorophyll's structure or production are deficient, chlorophyll production will decrease and the leaves will start to turn yellow. This will decrease the overall production and growth of a plant, which can lead to poor performance and even death. Furthermore, slight discolorations can deter customers and decrease the grower's earning potential. It is therefore extremely important that nursery owners know how to treat and ideally prevent nutrient deficiencies that lead to foliar discoloration. Deficiencies of nitrogen, magnesium and iron are common contributors to the yellowing of leaves. As aforementioned, these elements are important for the structure and production of chlorophyll. Nitrogen uptake is influenced not only by its concentration in the growing medium, but other indirect factors such as water availability and soil pH. Nitrogen is a mobile element within the plant, which means it can be relocated from the older leaves to newer ones during deficiency periods. Therefore, older leaves will generally start to show signs of nitrogen deficiency before the younger, newer leaves. Magnesium deficiencies can also cause a yellowing of leaves and leaf edges. As we mentioned earlier, chlorophyll is a chelate, containing a central magnesium atom. Like nitrogen, magnesium can be translocated to younger leaves, so the older leaves will start to yellow first. Other symptoms include intervenal chlorosis. This describes the state of leaves when the veins remain green, but the areas between the veins turn yellow. Sandy, light soils can easily leach magnesium, especially during periods of heavy rain or over-irrigation. In addition to this, magnesium, potassium and calcium are mutual antagonists to one another. This means that if one is present in excessive amounts, it will inhibit the plant's ability to absorb the others. Therefore. Excessive fertilization of other nutrients may cause a plant to suffer from magnesium deficiency, even if it is available in the soil. Playing an important role in chlorophyll production, leaves will turn yellow if iron is deficient too. Deficiency symptoms are similar to those for magnesium, with intervenal chlorosis visible on the leaves. Unlike magnesium, however, the plant cannot translocate iron, therefore newer leaves will show signs of deficiency before the older ones. A plant's ability to uptake iron is dependent on the pH of a soil. In severely acidic or alkaline soils, many nutrients will not be plant available. Hydrangeas are a great example to show how nutrients are differentially available at high and low soil pH. The aluminium iron responsible for blue blooms on hydrangeas is more available in acidic soils with a low pH, which is why hydrangeas grown in more alkaline soils will have pink flower heads. In terms of iron, the nutrient is less plant available in alkaline soils, especially when the pH is above 7.5. It is better to try and prevent nutrient deficiencies as opposed to treating them once they become a problem. The best way a grower can accomplish this is by starting off with soils or growing mediums that have a neutral pH. Good quality irrigation water with a pH between 5 to 7 should be used. However, these water sources may contain elements that have the potential to raise the pH of a grain medium. Calcium and magnesium are examples thereof, and when applied regularly, will increase the alkalinity of a grain medium. In these cases, a grower may choose to use a more acidic soil mix as the pH will increase over time with each irrigation. Irrigation water can be treated with phosphoric or nitric acid by injection into the irrigation system. However, this is quite an expensive venture and may not be feasible for all growers. A grower may also choose to use acidifying or alkalizing fertilizers. 
In the cases of a high pH soil mix, acidifying fertilizers with a sulfur or nitrogen source, such as ammonium sulfate, can be used to lower the pH. In acidic soils, limestone ammonium nitrate can be used as it is less acidifying. In severe conditions, it would be beneficial to add lime to your soil to increase the pH. Epsom salts, also known as magnesium sulfate, are commonly used to improve magnesium availability. Epsom salts can be added dry or dissolved in the irrigation water. However, take care when adding Epsom salts to your grain medium, as excessive magnesium within the soil may cause potassium or calcium deficiencies. Alkaline soils can also benefit from chelated iron drenches. When applied as a chelate, iron will be plant available even in extremely alkaline conditions. Over-irrigating your plants can cause nutrients to leach from the soil and grain medium. Therefore, a well-thought-out irrigation schedule and water-retaining amendments such as coir, vermiculite and sand can be added to the grain medium to limit the amount of irrigation required. By the time deficiency symptoms appear, it may be too late to solve the problem. This is especially true in species like Elegia tectorum, which struggles to recover from alkaline conditions. Therefore, soil tests and proper amendments prior to planting is recommended if you want to increase your chances of success in your nursery. And that brings us to the end of our video on how to diagnose, prevent, and treat nutrient deficiency symptoms in your nursery. Before you go, remember your copy of our ebook, and we will see you in the next video.